What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got Israel Desanya's next title defense, Nate Diaz's potential retirement fight, and much more. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this. Now let's get into it. Jake Paul blasts decision to pull Joe Rogan from UFC 271, but reports say otherwise. With how much Joe Rogan has been in the spotlight lately, for not so good reasons, he ultimately had to step away from the broadcaster's table for the UFC 271 pay-per-view this past weekend. But the question here is, whose decision was this? Just for a bit of context, Rogan has been a hot topic lately due to a few guests he had on his podcast, both doctors, to discuss all things COVID-19 and the vaccines. Then an even bigger storm took place when the video showing all the times Rogan said the n-word on his podcast was posted online, without any of the context. He's since issued an apology and provided a lot of the context behind when he used the word, saying that he regretted ever saying it. The backlash was strong and fierce but so was the support for Rogan. One of those supporting voices for Joe Rogan is Jake Paul, who blamed the UFC and ESPN for pulling Rogan from the airwaves for UFC 271. This is what he said. So ESPN and Disney pulled Joe Rogan from the UFC broadcast, but stand behind Dana White, who calls reporters douchebags, says a female fighter looks like a male fighter in dress and heels, and claims brain damage is part of the gig? You pulled the wrong guy, Mr. Chappick. Well, not long after Jake Paul sounded off with his tweet, MMA journalist Aaron Bronstetter made a tweet of his own quoting Dana White, in which he stated, White says that Joe Rogan elected not to work tonight. It's unclear what exactly happened here and who to believe. On the one side, Jake Paul isn't really known for checking his sources and being reliable with information. On the other hand, believing Dana White on this matter is also pretty squirrely, given that he has a promotion and image to protect. But we gotta give him the benefit of the doubt here, because this does sound like something that Rogan would do in order to not transfer any of the bad light to the promotion or take away from the fighters or the event. Ultimately, we'd have to wait and see what Joe Rogan says on this matter, which he would most likely reveal on his podcast sometime in the near future. You know his next guest, if they're an MMA fan, would ask him this very question. Heck, even Michael Bisping, who replaced Rogan at the broadcaster's table over the weekend, he might even reveal his side of the story on his YouTube channel this week. What do you make of this whole situation? Do you believe the UFC and ESPN pulled Rogan off the broadcast to not get the heat from the recent controversies? Or do you believe Rogan genuinely elected not to commentate on Saturday night? Let us know your thoughts on the comments below. Sean O'Malley and Marlon Vera get into a war of words online. Is a rematch brewing between Marlon Chito Vera and Sean O'Malley? The trash talk between these two bantamweights is only intensifying, mostly due to O'Malley trolling the Ecuadorian native. It all began when the UFC announced that they were moving the scheduled Rafael Fiziev Rafael Dos Anjos fight from next week's February 19 fight night card to UFC 272. For a brief while there, the UFC was looking to fill that fight night main event spot with some other fight, although the promotion ultimately decided to elevate the Jamal Hill, Johnny Walker fight in its place. But before that became the case, Chito offered his services to the UFC and made it pretty clear that he was interested in taking on whoever they wanted just to get in that main event slot. Case in point, this is what he tweeted out to the UFC. UFC needs new main event? What's up? Holla at me. Then O'Malley chimes in with a bit of a burn. Of the prelims? Then Vera replies back to O'Malley by referencing his previous fight with Sugar. Oh, trashy, join the conversation. You want to get your head stomped on the ground again? The two don't exactly see eye to eye, given that they've met in the cage back at UFC 252. In the second round of that fight, O'Malley hurt his leg following a kick to Vera, which the 29-year-old capitalized on, got on top of O'Malley, and beat him with ground and pound for the victory. Since then, O'Malley has always called that loss a fluke. Still, what do you think about this back and forth between these two? And would you want to watch a rematch between Marlon Vera and Sean O'Malley? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest fight news. Following middleweight title defense, Israel Adesanya's next opponent already announced. Israel Adesanya put in an amazing performance against a much improved and focused Robert Whittaker. The last stylebender was elusive and in control for most of his middleweight title bout against Whittaker at UFC 271 on Saturday night. Not only was Adesanya able to get in some great shots, 
peppering in those low kicks that wore on the Aussie, but he also showed his improved takedown defense that many knew Whitaker would test him with. Adesanya did enough to walk away with a unanimous decision win and his fourth title defense. In the post-fight interview inside the Octagon, Adesanya was asked what's next for his title ring, and he flat out said that he's targeting a July bout and admitted that Jared Cannonier looks like the next likely contender. It seems like the UFC president Dana White agrees, as an MMA reporter on Twitter said that the boss man confirmed the bout. Dana White confirms Jared Cannonier is next up for Adesanya. I'm not going to say no to Cannonier. Cannonier made an incredible comeback just two fights before Adesanya's. The 37-year-old dispatched Derek Brunson in the second round with some nasty elbows from the ground and pound. Just a few minutes prior to that, Cannonier was on the ground, defending a rear naked choke attempt by Brunson, who slapped it on with just seconds to go. It was a disheartening round for the Texan, but he rallied to knock down Brunson with aggressive shots in the second, and eventually put his opponent away with some strong elbows from up top for a referee stoppage. Going into that fight, many knew that it would most likely be a number one contender bout. Cannonier is the highest ranked UFC middleweight whom Adesanya has yet to face, and with recent wins over Kelvin Gastelum and now Brunson, it makes sense that the promotion set this fight up. However, it's still worth noting that Cannonier had a hard time against Robert Whittaker in October 2020, although MMA math is really not something that can be counted on when you're talking about some of the top fighters in the world, Cannonier also has notable wins over Anderson Silva and Jack Hermanson. There's no date for this fight, but who knows, maybe the UFC will take a note from Adesanya and book this for the July pay-per-view. What are your thoughts on this potential midway title fight between Cannonier and Adesanya? And in your eyes, who's the early favorite? One more fight for Nate Diaz and he's calling out Dustin Poirier for it. Nate Diaz says he's almost done fighting, but has one more fight to bang out before he actually does so. Diaz is 36 years old and has been fighting since 2004. That's about 18 years and he's now considered one of the biggest draws in the game outside of Conor McGregor. He's had so many amazing scraps inside the cage that the fans would love to see Diaz go out in a big time way and Diaz himself is behind that idea, so he's calling out Dustin Poirier for his swan song. Case in point, this is what he said in a recent brief interview with TMZ that was posted over the weekend. I would like to fight Dustin Poirier like now, like I've been trying to, so if there's any mix up, it's him and them and the game, I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? So you still want that fight? I DP. want the fight now. What's up? Dan White, let's get this retirement fight cracking so I can get, get out of this fight how, game. How does that fight go down? It's amazing that these two have never actually fought each other, though there's always been a back and forth, especially of late. Since his loss to the lightweight champion Charles Oliveira in December, Poirier and Diaz have been mixing it up online with some trash talk and verbal jabs. The two were actually scheduled to meet in the Octagon back at UFC 230 in 2018, but that fight was cancelled after the Diamond suffered an injury that forced him to withdraw. Diaz has been calling out Poirier for a few months now, and it makes a lot of sense. The two have been fighting for so long, have exciting styles, are fan favorites, and always deliver a good fight for the people. In his last fight, Diaz was able to briefly rock Leon Edwards at UFC 263 before he ultimately lost by decision against Rocky, who will challenge for the welterweight title. While Diaz is saying that his plan is to retire, it remains to be seen if he actually does. He's been negotiating the final fight of his UFC contract, but it's unclear what he would do after that. Retirement or not, we'll have the latest here on the MMA Zone. What do you think about Diaz saying he wants to retire? And what are your thoughts about him fighting Dustin Poirier, presumably as his last bout? Thanks so much for joining us today and catching up on all things MMA. What do you make of what's going on in the fight world? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest news from the MMA Zone. See you next time.